What a... And g'day viewers, I'm Michael. And I'm Janet. And welcome to this week's episode about navigating the negatives. Where we explore the hidden power of your negative feelings and show you how to turn them into catalysts for personal growth. We'll show you some practical ways to harness these emotions as a force for positive change. So if you're ready to unlock the mysteries of your inner world and navigate your emotions like a pro, then listen up. What a... And g'day listeners, I'm Michael. And I'm Janet. And welcome to this week's episode about Navigating the Negatives where we explore the hidden power of your negative emotions and feelings and show you how to turn them into catalysts for personal growth. Our negative emotions are a vital part of the bigger picture in achieving overall happiness. Life is all about balance and we need every negative emotion as much as we need all of our positive ones. It's the yin-yang of it all. I was at a couple of funerals recently and at one service they read one of my favourite verses about this balance of life called There is a Time for Everything. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to sow and a time to reap, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. And yes, for all of these things, there is a time and place, and the same goes for our negative feelings and emotions. How could we possibly experience hyper joy if we've never felt extreme sadness? Reflecting again upon the funerals that Mitch and I have been to recently, I was reminded that the ultimate price for deep love is deep grief. This life of ours is a risky business. If you want to feel all the feels of the great and positive times on this roller coaster of life, you've got to know that the negs will also be served up. First up is recognizing and accepting this fact, and second up is how to develop awareness and strategies around managing this balancing act. So let's, for example, take anger, the emotion that causes rapid pulse rate. People talk about seeing red and their blood boiling. Anger has its rightful place in anyone's day when it's warranted, and it has levels. All emotions have levels, and we need to remain aware of that. For example, on a scale of 1 to 10, when a loved one has been hurt or endangered, or you've witnessed an act of terror on an innocent or someone who's made a statement that completely goes against every fibre of humanity in your being, rate it a 10. Note it, rate it, scream about it, sure, hit a punching bag, preferably not a wall or something that you'll cause damage to yourself or the object, something soft that can withstand the blow and walk away from the situation and do all the aforementioned things. Just keep yourself and others safe in the process. That is the key to handling negative emotions. We're aware of them. You stop to rate their intensity. And obviously, if these emotions are on a repeat pattern for you, seek professional therapy from a qualified medical practitioner. There are many modalities that they can introduce to help you manage negative emotions and feelings. Negative emotions invite us to make changes where needed, and they help us take action when we are experiencing the associated negative behaviors that are associated with the negative emotion, leading us to a better future. Negative emotions can actually heighten attention to detail by serving as indicators of challenges or novel stimuli demanding focused consideration. Unlike positive emotions that signal environmental harmony, negative emotions act as alerts, prompting an exploration of potential issues. Some of our common negative emotions are sadness, anger, anxiety, guilt, jealousy, fear and apathy. Harnessing these negative emotions as a force for positive change involves acknowledging and understanding these emotions and then using them as tools for growth and transformation. So what are some practical ways that we can harness sadness, anger, anxiety, guilt, 
jealousy, fear, and apathy positively. Well, let's start with sadness. Sadness functions as a signal that something is amiss, urging us to scrutinize the situation, identify causative factors, and devise corrective actions. You can use sadness as a signal to reflect on the root causes of dissatisfaction. It can actually prompt self-discovery and insights into areas of life that may need attention. It's helpful to channel the energy from sadness into motivation for positive change. Next up is one we mentioned earlier, anger. Anger can act as a potent motivator for conflict resolution without necessarily leading to aggression. Although aggression follows anger in only about 10% of instances, its primary function lies in stimulating proactive responses to address problematic scenarios or individuals. Anger serves as an alert, prompting reflection on the reasons behind certain behaviours and inspires efforts to restore harmony. It can be helpful to redirect the energy from anger into constructive actions. As, as we mentioned earlier, make sure you're safe, the situation's safe, the other people are safe. So remove, remove yourself from the situation if you need to and to get that sense of distance and time for reflection. Identify the aspects of the situation that can be changed and work towards positive outcomes. Then there's our old friend, anxiety. And while it can be really uncomfortable, it can also foster innovative problem-solving approaches. It's actually linked to the fight or flight response. So anxiety compels us to seek solutions swiftly, especially in perilous situations. This negative emotion encourages the exploration of new strategies to navigate threats and challenges, ultimately promoting adaptive problem solving. You can use anxiety as a cue for mindfulness and relaxation techniques. Practices such as deep breathing, meditation or yoga can help manage anxiety and promote a sense of calm. And what about guilt? Well, guilt can actually be viewed as a constructive emotion. And when so, it becomes a catalyst for positive behavioural change. Guilt operates as a moral compass. Guilt signals instances where actions may have caused harm to someone we cared about. It's important to take accountability for our actions, learn from our mistakes and use the experience to make positive changes. We often talk about the F word, and no, yep. it's not the one that springs to your mind. It is forgiveness. If possible, make amends for any harm you may have caused and seek forgiveness from others. And most importantly, forgive yourself to move forward positively. Then there's jealousy, which is often termed as benign envy, and it serves as a motivational force for increased effort. So when experienced positively, jealousy can encourage us to improve our performance. And by witnessing others' achievements can actually make success more tangible, motivating us to strive harder towards our goals. You can actually transform jealousy into inspiration for self-improvement. So try to identify the qualities or achievements that trigger jealousy and use them as benchmarks for your own personal growth. And when this green-eyed monster pops up, instead of competing... Consider collaborating with those that evoke jealousy. This can lead to mutual benefit and shared success. Fear, despite its discomfort, acts as a survival mechanism, prompting us to assess and respond to potential threats. This heightened alertness can lead to improved decision-making and precautionary measures, ensuring your safety and well-being. Using fear as a tool for assessing risks is a great start. If you evaluate potential outcomes and develop strategies, it'll help you to mitigate the risks. Fear can prompt careful planning and preparation. Yes, fear is real, but you can challenge yourself to face your fears gradually. And in many cases, fear is stepping outside your comfort zone, and we've all done that. Taking small steps outside your comfort zone can build resilience and self-confidence over time, which then expands your comfort zone. Every time you do this, that little next step further, that zone grows and you in the process. Sure does. And then you're comfortable in that new comfort zone. And finally, there's apathy. And while generally considered negative, apathy can actually signal a need for introspection and a break from overwhelming stimuli. So recognize apathy as a sign of burnout or overwhelm. 
Use it as a signal to prioritise self-care and take a break to recharge. Apathy may also indicate a misalignment with your personal goals. So you can use apathy as an opportunity to reassess your priorities and set meaningful objectives. And as always, remember to seek professional therapy if you are finding the negative emotions in your life overwhelming. When you can sit and talk through the emotions and situations that are worrying you and you can get some guidance on how to best deal with them, you will feel relief and support and move on to have a great life. And that is our wish for you. Until next time, love and blessings. See ya.